today we're going to be diving into a quick and simple QGIS shortest path network analysis. Before we go into that, this tutorial is based off of one that I found online and I'll go ahead and link to it so you can see more of the details. I had to make some slight adjustments for the data that we're working with, but I thought it was a really good basic tutorial and a great place to get started. My goal with this was to look for potential areas where a network analysis might win over a mobile application network analysis. That's really what you run when you think of something like Google Maps and you say, well, I want to find the shortest path. So you plug your location to Google Maps and you plug in the place that you want to go. But there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes and I wanted to look more into how that works from a desktop perspective. I actually did a write-up of some reasons why you might choose to do a desktop network analysis and use cases on my blog. So if you want to read more details about network analysis and their use cases and why you might want to learn these skills, go ahead and take a look. It's free. If you want to subscribe so you get my digest every week, it's super easy. You just put in your email and you get all the information that I typically send out in a weekly digest along with a lot of other really great geospatial tools and news and productivity resources. All right, so once we've got all of our data loaded, I went ahead and cleaned it up just a little bit so you can visualize a few things easier. I went ahead and added the open street maps base map so that way we can actually have some reference to where we are and what we're looking at. And I also went and did just a minor adjustment here on the color of the roadway just so we can have a better look at what we're dealing with. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in here to properties and we're going to create a rules based rule. So you'll do that by adding a rule and I've already created one here. And what I've gone and done is, if you look at the original tutorial, it gives you a way to select for one-way streets. And when you look in the documentation, City of Austin, the way they do it is with a field in your data, in your shapefile called one-way. So we're basically saying, in that field, we want to differentiate between FT and TF. And you can find out what that means in the documentation. Yours might look a little bit different. You might have to play with your data a little bit more to get it looking the way we want to so we can do a proper analysis on it. Then what we go ahead and do is in this rule as well, we then add a line marker symbol and a simple marker. And then on this simple marker, we go over here to rotation. And what we're currently telling is if the one way is equal to FT 180 or if not zero. So basically it's giving us an arrow for our symbol. And when we're using that to say if it's the way we, if it's one way this way and it's the other way that way. So that allows us to do this. And then what we can do is we can actually turn this layer on. It's already done it. We'll apply it and visualize it. And so what you can see here is these are now classified as one-way streets. And you can see how that works there. And so all these little red triangles kind of visualize where you might have a one-way street in our data. And so that is certainly very valuable. So the last part of this to actually run the analysis is to come over here to your toolbox. You're going to plug in shortest and then you're going to look up your network analysis, shortest path, point to point. You're going to use your layer for your lines. You're going to do shortest or fastest. For this tutorial, we're doing shortest because we're interested in that. We're going to do a start point and we're going to select, actually, let's select something else. I want to do something right here. Let's select this. For our endpoint, we're going to select something a little bit farther away. Um, let's see what we can do. Maybe something right. Let's do something further back here. Okay, and now we run our analysis. So you wait for a moment. So now we've done that, and now what you can see is we have this layer that was generated called shortest path. We're going to go to properties. We're going to actually change it to this so we can see it a little better. It's not the prettiest, but now you can see how our path has been created and it allows us to, if we move this under here, let's move it underneath, then we can see our other line work on top of it. It doesn't look like we went through any one-way areas, I can tell, at least from this. Uh, maybe closer up here, but that's kind of a two-way, so you can see right here way facing this way in this way
And that's really all there is to it. A network analysis is a really valuable tool, especially if you're interested in other parts of geospatial analysis. A lot of times people are going to do buffers, people are going to be doing raster stuff, whether you're calculating NDVI or surface temperature, but network analysis is something a little bit different because you're still working with line work, but you're working with parameters of those lines and then you're using tools, but you need to understand how those tools can be applied to solve other problems. And so I did a more extensive write up on my blog as far as the things you can do that would include places where road data doesn't exist yet, advanced traffic analysis, complex rules-based analysis. That's something that you should really look into if you're interested in network analysis. Advanced visualizations for web applications and applications that allow you to do research on these networks themselves. So things like traffic flow, things like choke points where you can actually find out specific areas where lots of places run their analysis through, you might need to solve for that in the future, not just, un not just searching for nearest points. But the value in this is understanding how that data works and understanding how to apply rules to it. I went ahead and attached some resources to the description of this video for you to go ahead and do this res for you to be able to do this project yourself. I included some tips and some tutorials as well as some differences between ArcGIS and QGIS that would help you understand what we're doing with these. I did a full write-up. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't checked out, we recently released a podcast that was just like basic. And if you hadn't seen on my channel, I recently released just my first episode of a podcast, which is on YouTube. It's not like on Spotify or anything like that yet. I'm still getting the audio worked out for that. But what we're doing on the podcast is basically just an audio version of some of the interesting topics that I cover in my newsletter and some of the topics that I cover here. Sometimes they're too small to be just a video by themselves or too small to be a blog post or it's not writable enough for a blog post. It's more just like thought and opinion and I kind of use that podcast space to get some better ideas and just ask some better questions. This week we talk about the Zillow bike score problem that I talked about last week on my blog where I had some questions and some thoughts on the way that Zillow calculates their bike score. So if you want to hear about that, you should definitely check out that video. Once again, thanks for watching and have a good one.